this is Charles Brewer, president of Civil War Study Group here at Lake of the Woods, Virginia. Welcome to this, the recording of our program on October 28th, 2022. Uh, I'm Charles Brewer, president of the Civil War Study Group here at Lake of the Woods. Uh, and wow, what a crowd. Imagine throwing a party and everyone came. Uh, this is great. Uh, before introducing today's speaker, I'd like to mention a few items. Uh, some of you may have been able to attend the town hall on the Wilderness Crossing proposal this past uh, Tuesday, uh, which was sponsored by the Piedmont Environmental Council and other groups. Uh, uh, this informative presentation emphasized environmental concerns as well as issues of traffic congestion, pollution, uh, and availability of water resources and of supreme importance to this group. Uh, the potential side effects on the Wilderness Battlefield Park uh, should such a project be approved and go further. Uh, uh, I strongly recommend you stay informed on this uh, situation because our voices do uh, make a difference. Uh, uh, by putting yourself on PEC, that's Piedmont Environmental Council's mailing list, to receive monthly uh, updates. Go to their website, pecva.org, and uh, scroll down and click the button to sign up to receive email alerts. When you do receive these email alerts, you will really understand the breadth of the work of this group. Uh, they cover not only Orange County, but uh, all other surrounding counties that are part of uh, the Piedmont, uh, uh, part of Virginia. Our November meeting will be in this space on Friday, November 18, at the usual 10.30 a.m. Our speaker will be historian and battlefield tour guide, John Canister, uh, who will be speaking about the Battle of Mine Run, which occurred nearly uh, nearby 159 years ago in 1863, end of November, beginning of December, 1863. After his presentation in the morning, John will lead an afternoon coach tour of key battlefield sites. Uh, there is a link on our website for signing up for that, uh, and I'm going to ask our Vice President, uh, Jack Finn, after the presentation to give an update report uh, so that if there are no more seats available, you don't have to go sign up. Um, but anyway, uh, today's topic uh, ties nicely with uh, November's. Uh, our speaker today is fellow uh, Lake of the Woods resident, Tom Nimbig who will be speaking about the winter encampment of both armies after Mine Run, the Confederates in Orange County and the Union troops in uh, uh, Culpeper County, almost 200,000 troops. Mm. Tom Newbig, uh, for a long time, wanted to become a history professor, but after reading a Penguin paperback on the history of economics, he fell in love with economics. Go okay. figure. Uh, uh, especially since uh, economics is known is otherwise known as the dry science. Uh, but yay, Tom. Uh, he has a PhD, uh, uh, AKA piled high and deeper. I would have added that, but he, he put that in himself. In economics from the University of Michigan. Uh, he specialized in tax policy economics at the U.S. Department of Treasury, mm -hmm. Ernst & Young, the accounting firm, and the OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh la la. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he and his wife have owned at Lake of the Woods since 2011, but became full-time residents in 2020. Mm -hmm. Civil War history is one of his hobbies, including biking, hiking, and kayaking, in Piedmont, uh, Virginia. So that suggests that he's also tremendously fit. Uh, without uh, further ado, I turn the floor over to our speaker, Tom. Thank you, Charles, and also thank you to the uh, Civil War Study Group. I've really benefited from uh, attending over the last uh, 10 years, and I was bold enough to uh, offer to present and share some thoughts on one particular issue. And I was really intrigued. Let's see if you can turn the volume down a little bit. I'm not sure I'm capable of handling that, Doug. So, so now I'm, uh, 
on the podium. But I was, I was really intrigued by uh, the, the news. Yep. Okay. News about the new uh, Culpeper State Park that earlier this year was still being considered. And in fact, it uh, actually did pass the legislature in uh, June and was signed by Governor Yonkin. Uh, very exciting about, uh, we're gonna have a new state park that includes uh, Cedar Mountain, uh, Brandy Station, parts of Kelly Ford, parts of Rappahannock Station. And uh, what really intrigued me was that it includes uh, Hansboro Ridge that we'll be talking about. And you know, that I, that I drive by uh, every time I go to Culpeper County. And, uh, Hopefully you'll also uh, uh, start focusing on uh, Hansboro Ridge as well. And so between the Battle of Mine Run that was in late uh, November 1863 and the start of the Overland Campaign that started with the Battle of the Wilderness in uh, May of 1864, you know, as Charles said, uh, the uh, Confederates went into winter encampment in uh, Culpeper County, south of Clark's Mountain, and, uh, oh, in Orange County, south of uh, uh, Clark's Mountain, and the Union uh, Army had winter encampment almost throughout uh, Culpeper County. And uh, their, their headquarters, they um, were there for, for five, five months and their headquarters are separated by less than 20 miles. Mm. And it's really interesting uh, to think about winter encampments. There are so many dimensions to uh, these armies in uh, winter encampment. Uh, there are dimensions such as camp, camp life, there are all kinds of personalities, there's politics, there's the issue of reenlistment since a lot of the Union and the Confederate soldiers uh, two or three year enlistments were coming up uh, in February of uh, 1864 and unless they were renewed, uh, you know, the armies were going to be significantly reduced. There's issue of lack of supplies uh, for the Confederates, uh, a key issue that uh, General Lee was focusing on throughout the, uh, the winter encampment. And you have Mosby's Rangers up in Fauquier County, uh, uh, you know, attacking you know the sutlers, the railroads, uh, the the pickets, uh, and so many others. And so I had to choose how I could focus this presentation into something that is doable. And so what I'm going to principally focus on is the geographical considerations uh, of these two counties of Culpeper and Orange County, where where we live, and it's really amazing that the county's landscapes and the Rapidan River, as well as the Rappahannock River, are almost unchanged from 150 plus years ago. Clark Munsell and Doug Vickery and I have kayaked on the Rapidan and on the Rappahannock River, and it is just amazing to be out on those rivers, and you see no civilization whatsoever. You see no houses, and in fact on the Rappahannock River, coming from Eli's Ford, the only civilization we saw was the I-95 bridge. And uh, it is just spectacular. And now we're gonna have a very exciting new Culpeper Battlefield State Park uh, that I know we will all be enjoying. So the geographical dimensions that I wanna focus on are rivers and fords, railroads, the roads, and also the heights, which include mountains as well as uh, ridges that have played an important part in the winter encampment and also in, in terms of the battles. And there are geographical implications uh, that include logistics, supplying 200,000 troops in these two counties was a major effort. Uh, and that's where the railroads uh, played an important part. Uh, also defensive in terms of guarding the railroads and also guarding the river fords. Uh, communications among the, uh, the different uh, corps and division uh, was very important. Also spying and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you can also suggest to me some other uh, uh, 
geographical implications as well when you are, are thinking about it. But uh, I went back and I counted the number of days that were in nine battles in Orange and uh, Culpeper County that included, well, I, I included Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Wilderness, uh, Spotsylvania Courthouse, Kelly's Ford, uh, Brandy Station, uh, Cedar Mountain, uh, Mine Run, and the total fighting over those nine battles was 38 days. Those nine battles. I think three or four of them were only one day battles. These troops spent 155 days in winter encampment in, in our two, two counties. So if we want to talk about the Culpeper Battlefield State Park, you know, after several years of intense effort by the American Battlefield Trust, a number of uh, um, groups in Culpeper County, and I want to give real kudos to uh, Bud Hall, who is just a phenomenal uh, historian in Culpeper County and who I've benefited from a lot in terms of uh, learning about the winter encampment. Uh, they were able to get the legislation passed. Uh, what's going to happen is a, a national nonprofit, the American Battlefield Trust, is going to donate 1,700 acres mm -hmm. to create a state preserve. The state is going to appropriate $3 million to enable the American Battlefield Trust to acquire an additional 800 acres to try to make uh, some of the parcels of uh, the ABT current. Uh, ownership more contiguous, especially in Brandy Station, but also Cedar Mountain, and it will include, you know, uh, a number of different uh, different sites. And I'm really excited about the Union Winter Encampment on Hansboro Ridge near uh, near Stevensburg. When you go, uh, and I'll, I'll have maps. Unlike Pete Rainey, who didn't have maps last month, I have quite a few maps. But as you drive toward Culpeper, and you go past the greenhouses on the north side. And you go just a little bit further, about half a mile, three quarters of a mile, you'll see Route 70, 739 going off. But if you look just beyond that, you will see Hansboro Ridge, Hansboro Ridge uh, going to the north. And that's where uh, 8,000 Union troops uh, wintered. And there's some fat, fantastic uh, um, stone foundations still in the woods. And so they're going to accept uh, the transfer of this property and uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation is going to make improvements <laughs> to provide for heritage, tourism, camping, fishing, boating, equestrian activities, biking, and historical and military education. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're gonna make minimally necessary improvements uh, to protect the existing historic, cultural, architectural, and natural resources uh, of these areas. Um, this is just the Col or the Brandy Station uh, part of the, uh, mm. and so you've got Route 29, you've got Fleetwood Hill where there was the 20,000 cavalry soldiers fighting uh, in Brandy Station. You've got the Hazel River that comes through the northern part of Culpeper County, but then you've got the Rappahannock River that uh, mm. uh, borders the north of Culpeper County. And uh, I'm hoping that there will be some uh, boat launches and all in, uh, in the Rappahannock River section. So just real quick, uh, just generally Culpeper County, it was split from Orange County in 1749. It's essentially a triangle between the Rappahannock and Rapidan Rivers. Uh, the town of Culpeper was actually before 1870 uh, called Culpeper Courthouse. And before that, it was called Fairfax, uh, after Lord Fairfax. Orange County uh, you know, goes from Barbersville and Gordonsville to the uh, southwest to Germana Ford, Locust Grove, uh, and is bordered by six counties. Here's a map of uh, the two counties from an 1867 map. Oh, okay. So we've got uh, Culpeper right in the center here. And then, of course, you've got the Rappahannock River to the north of Culpeper County. You've got the Rapidan River to the south of Culpeper, but to the north of Orange. And this is where 
uh, the, the winter encampments were. Uh, you've got your Nana Ford over here that we're very familiar with, and you've got uh, downtown Locust Grove uh, right here. You've got the Orange Turnpike. Look how straight the Orange Turnpike is, which is one, one of its uh, one of its failures. But uh, we're, we've got uh, here's here's Route 29, and you've got Brandy Station, and you've got uh, Stevensburg here. How many of you are familiar with Old House Vineyards? Okay, so I'm going to try to make some references to, uh, in terms of just locations, you know, Old House Vineyards is right, right there, a little bit north, uh, northwest of, uh, of Stevensburg. And actually, this map is drawn by Jadea Hodgkiss, who was Stonewall Jackson's cartographer. And he's uh, made an awful lot of maps. After Stonewall Jackson died, he was on Lee's uh, Lee staff uh, mapping the area because the maps were extremely important uh, in terms of the, the fighting, and that's where the Confederates had a real advantage, knowing the territory versus the uh, versus the Union. Uh, in terms of population, uh, in 1860, there were 12,000 in Culpeper County, about 11,000 in Orange County. About 55% uh, of that population was enslaved uh, individuals. Uh, and so during the winter of 1863 to 64, roughly 100,000 uh, Union were encamped in Culpeper County. Roughly 65,000 were encamped in, uh, in Orange County. And you can see in the most recent 2020 census, uh, Culpeper County had 50. 3,000 and Orange County had 36,000. So it was you know, three times as many as we currently have. And in terms of talking to Bud Hall, he thinks that the uh, population of Culpeper Courthouse, the actual town, was about 1,000 people. Uh, and then another 9,000 spread throughout the large, large county. During the winter encampment, uh, a lot of the Culpeper County residents had, had uh, moved south. They moved a lot of their enslaved uh, you know, uh, property to uh, other parts of Virginia or further south to protect their to protect their property, and a lot of them fled to, uh, as a result of safety. So there was probably only about 3,000 uh, actual residents at the time of 1863-1864, and so. We're very familiar with the wilderness, uh, you know, second growth, uh, tangles of brush and small trees as a result of the iron uh, or the timbering for the iron furnaces earlier. But it's just important to note that, uh, and here's the, uh, the Rapidan River, that the wilderness was not in Culpeper County at all. The wilderness was only in Orange, and Spotsylvania County. And so it included, you know, the Battle of the Wilderness and the Battle of Chancellorsville. Uh, you know, Spotsylvania Courthouse battle was uh, sort of southeast of the wilderness, but uh, only the very northeastern part of Orange County included the wilderness, and it really did not come into play uh, during the, uh, the winter encampment. It, it did. Uh, occur immediately after because they move from the winter encampment to uh, to the wilderness. And so let's talk about you know why were the winter encampment locate, located here? And that's uh, again geographical features: the rivers, mountains, and railroads. Uh, Meade actually wanted to be uh, near Aquia Harbor, north of uh, Fredericksburg, because he thought thought it would be easier to supply. Some people speculate he wanted to be there because he had also had bad experiences in the wilderness, the mine run campaign. Uh, uh, President Lincoln and Secretary of War Stanton wanted me near the Confederate Army, so they told him that he had to, to be in uh, Culpeper County. That fortunately uh, could be easily supplied by the Orange and Alexandria Railroad that had been constructed and completed in 1854. They were able to uh, transport supplies very easily from Alexandria uh, down to, uh, it went all the way to Gordonsville, 
but Gordonsville is in Orange County, mm. uh, so it stopped in uh, Orange Courthouse, or actually down to Mitchell Station, and they had major supply depots at uh, Brandy Station, and they actually created a, a new um, station, Ingle Station, about a mile east, in order to uh, use that for the livestock. Um, so they were easily supplied. Um, the Confederates actually wanted to winter in Culpeper initially, and they were building some of their winter huts um, south of the Rappahannock, but uh, they saw a better defensive position south of the Rapidan and also shorter supply lines for them. So supply lines you know, were pretty critical in their thinking about uh, the winter encampments. There's a quote by Robert E. Lee in a letter uh, of August 4th, I could find no field in Culpeper offering advantages for battle, and any taken could be easily avoided should the enemy wish to reach the south bank of the Rapidan. That, I thought, advisable at once to retire to that bank. And so the, the banks of the Rapidan on the southern side are steeper than they are on the, uh, on the northern side. And uh, the Rapidan River, as well as Clark's Mountain, uh, provided a very strong defensive barrier from the uh, Union you know, trying to attack. So here's uh, Bud Hall's fantastic map of the Union winter encampment. And uh, you know, there's just so much here. Um, uh, you've got the, you know, the Rapidan River. Here, you've got the, the Rappahannock up here. Um, let's, let's take uh, Old House Vineyard, uh, is, is right there. And you had a major colonial road called the uh, Carolina Road that went from Pennsylvania down to South Carolina to cut through Culpeper County. Mm -hmm. And it actually uh, comes in and it literally is the Stevensburg Road that goes in front of uh, old house and keeps coming down on uh, 661 and then it comes over here and then goes across uh, raccoons raccoon ford which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later um you know brandy station is here fleetwood hill is just to the north of 29 uh, meads headquarters was just to the northeast of uh, uh fleetwood hill he was the uh commanding general of the Army of the Potomac, uh, you know, Grant in March was appointed to be, uh, I think it's lieutenant general, head of all the armies of, uh, of the Union, including you know, Sherman now taking over the Western Theater. But uh, Grant wanted to be with, the, with Meade and the Army of the Potomac during the Overland Campaign. Um, so you've got, uh, General Ewell's uh, Confederate troops here, and then uh, you got Clark, Clark's Mountain here. You got the Orange and Alexandria Railroad coming down here by Brandy Station uh, through Culpeper Courthouse, heading south, and then it goes on to Orange uh, uh, Courthouse and then uh, Gordonsville. Um, and there are a lot more things that uh, is just fascinating. It shows where the different uh, you know, the five, five Union Corps on, uh, on this map. This is the uh, National Park Service's map of the Confederate winter encampment. And there is a lot less known about the, uh, or at least a lot less written about the Confederate uh, winter encampment. And unfortunately, there are no photographs from the Confederate winter encampment, uh, just as there are much fewer uh, uh, Confederate uh, photos than the, than, than, the, than the Union. But you can see that the Confederates are uh, right along the Rappahannock River from about Liberty Mills to, uh, to Ma the Mine Run, which is right about here. And they essentially uh, were sheltered by Clark's Mountain. Now I'll have pictures of that. And they actually were behind uh, Clark's Mountain, so the Union couldn't really see the uh, Confederate winter encampment. Unlike uh, the Confederates were able to take advantage of Clark's Mountain, they could see all the Union winter encampment from, from Clark's Mountain. Uh, one of the things I've learned from the Civil War study group is that you, you can't always 
uh, trust everything that you read, and sometimes things get repeated multiple times, but they're all from one source, and that one source might be wrong. You know, the National Park Service has uh, Lee's headquarters, you know, right on the Orange Turnpike. Well, I think that is where the uh, highway sign is that talks about Lee's headquarters. Uh, he was not on the Orange Turnpike. He was up uh, just a little bit uh, southwest of Clark's Mountain, about a six mile uh, ride that he did, did uh, very often. Um, he was down here uh, earlier in 1863 at a different, uh, different headquarters. But uh, you essentially had um, A.P. Hill's uh, core around Orange Courthouse, and then you had um, Early's, or Ewell's, Ewell's core, you know, spread out uh, behind, behind Clark's Mountain up to, uh, up to Mine Run. This is another map, and um, this is one that uh, Butthole really does not like, and uh, there, are, there are good reasons for it. Part of it is that the, the uh, direction is, uh, is different. It's not uh, sort of north, north, south, but it does give you an overview of, uh, you know, the, uh, the Union. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the Union troops are, are over here. And you've got the uh, Confederate troops over here. Now, Godfrey has all the, all the troops in front of Clark Mountain, when in fact they were actually behind Clark. Clark's Mountain and they're back in, uh, in Orange County. Um, but this sort of shows, you know, I sort of like it because it, uh, it, it shows the two on, on the same, same page. I'm uh, going to be talking about the Orange Orange Turnpike, the straight line through here, and the Orange Plank Road that uh, comes back here and meets at Wilderness Tavern. But he also shows this dotted line is the unfinished railroad. They had just started to uh, construct a railroad from Fredericksburg to, to Orange, and it was uh, graded but not finished. And that unfinished railroad uh, played an important part in terms of the Confederates in the, in the wilderness. Uh, Battlefield, as well as in terms of uh, their their quick movement down to Spotsylvania Courthouse. So it was kind of fun to see, you know, the uh, the unfinished railroad. It finally did get uh, completed, you know, after after the war. It was a, a narrow gauge. It was only three feet wide uh, initially, as opposed to the standard uh, close to, to to five feet wide. So um, let me just check in terms of time. Um, Here's a picture uh, from Bud Hall that shows Coles Hill. And Coles Hill is just north of Hansboro Ridge. It's a long, if you go up Stevensburg Road and go beyond the Old House entrance about half a mile and you look up, you will see uh, this, this mansion up on top of Coles Hill <laughs> now. But uh, here is the uh, a photo from March of 1864 of the uh, third cavalry in front of Coles Hill. And you can see the, uh, the undulation and then Hansboro Ridge is over this, this direction. You've got exactly the same, except for the McMansion up there. Uh, essentially the same uh, layout as in 1864. This is a picture of um, what's called Lone Tree Hill. Uh, this is a little um, north uh, west of Old House Vineyards. Um, and some interesting features. One, you can just see how extensive, uh, just this is one of you know, probably 20 or 30 different camps uh, that are in Culpeper County. You can see the devastation mm -hmm. uh, with all the trees cut down, you know, for the huts and firewood and, and the plank uh, or corduroy roads. Mm -hmm. uh, but also what is interesting is uh, there's a railroad turnstile here where they were able to turn the, uh, the, the railroad trains around after they put their supplies in Brandy Station and uh, Ingle Station, they were able to, to, to uh, turn, turn the trains around to go back to the north. 
you can't really see it, but there's actually a telegraph line uh, here. Uh, and they actually use telegraphs to uh, communicate between the, uh, the, the different locations. So those are very intriguing. Um, you know, Patrick at Old House has said that there was a, you know, a tree that was used for hanging uh, mm -hmm. deserters and all, but uh, Butthole just shakes his head uh, at that. So uh, it's a good story. So Hillsborough Ridge had 6,000 men from the Second Corps. And the Second Corps was under Winfield Hancock, but he suffered a pretty bad wound at Gettysburg, and so uh, for a lot of the winter encampment, it, the, uh, the Second Corps was under uh, the control of Gov Governor Warren. Um, currently, there are over 140 hut foundations, plus extensive inner and outer trenches that remain on the Hansborough Ridge, which is going to be a fantastic part of the uh, New York Upper State Park. The, uh, the ridge was also called the Fort and also called, called Cold Hill. Um, if you go to Lynn Park across the Old House entrance, that was an important uh, battle uh, scene and part of the Brandy Station because there were about 400 Confederates that kept over 2,000 Union <coughs> cavalry from joining the Union forces near Fleetwood Hill. Um, and so here's 18th Cavalry on Hansborough Ridge. There are some, still some trees there. Uh, um, here's a corduroy road. This is actually isn't from Hansborough Ridge. It's from, I, I just learned it was from like 1861 and another Union camp. But uh, you can see the um, you know, it was so muddy, you know, which is why, you know, the battles in Chancellorsville and Wilderness started in the first week of May. It was because it was just treacherous in terms of moving, you know, lots of troops and especially the uh, infantry and all the supply wagons. And they would, they would build these corduroy, corduroy roads to go over and even put them in, in camp. So here's a picture of uh, Bud. Uh, is here, and then uh, Tracy Bear of uh, the Gettysburg Guides. Um, there's a new uh, Culpeper Battlefield Tours group that is hooked up with uh, a number of Gettysburg Guides. And one of the reasons why they're associated with the Gettysburg Guides is because the Gettysburg campaign started from Culpeper, Culpeper County, and they did the Brandy Station uh, cavalry fight, I think June 9th. Uh, 1863, that really didn't deter Lee much, maybe only by a day before he started heading up to Gettysburg. Uh, that happened a, a month, month later. But you can see this is one of many uh, different stone foundations that uh, are on Hansboro, Hansboro Ridge. Um, ABT, American Battlefield Trust, has about 174 acres on Hansboro Ridge that they're donating to, to the state. They initially got uh, much more than that, but uh, there was a timber contract mm. on uh, uh, much of the land, and when they timbered it, all this stuff got destroyed. The trenches, the, the stone foundations. And so uh, you see how important the preservation uh, work that these battlefield trusts are doing. And, uh, so you can just see how extensive the uh, the, the camps are, you get about 60, uh, not, not 60, six <laughs> soldiers in each of these camps, and then you had you know, the, uh, the supply, supply wagons. Uh, here is the location of some of the headquarters. Lee was in uh, Middle Hill, uh, Rogers Farms. I'll point out, uh, you want to go to a great B&B, uh, &B, the Mayhurst House, which is uh, just south of uh, Orange County, was where A.P. Hill uh, wintered, and uh, Jane and I uh, had our son's uh, wedding reception at uh, Mayhurst Inn, and it's fantastic. Uh, A.P. Hill's uh, child was christened in the Mayhurst Hotel, and uh, Lee and Stonewall Jackson were there. Um, no, actually, Stonewall Jackson couldn't have been there, um, <laughs> but other other Confederate generals were there. Uh, Meade, I said, you know, had his headquarters, and he was actually in a tent, uh, as Lee was. Uh, Lee and Meade did not stay in the houses. They were actually outside in, in, uh, in tents. Uh, Meade was northeast of Fleetwood Hill. Grant came down March 26th of 1864, and he lived in uh, the John Barber house, which is just one block west on, uh, on, uh, on Davis Street, west of, uh, west of Main Street. It's not there uh, where the courthouse is, and there are 
lots of uh, different places where Grant has said to have had his headquarters, but uh, but Bud Hole has done some extensive work, and uh, it's pretty clear that it's at the John Barber House. Um, uh, I'm going to mention uh, you know General Custer was at uh, Clover Hill and. Uh, uh, Old House Wines has a uh, Clover Hill uh, white wine. Uh, and on the back, you can read about it. Uh, and uh, Judson Kilpatrick was at Rose Hill. Um, and so here's uh, Custer's headquarters. It's just north of uh, Route 3. And he got married uh, in Michigan to uh, Libby Bacon uh, in February of 1864. And he actually brought her, and she lived at, uh, at Clover, Hill, Clover Hill Farm. Um, one of the sad stories is, and here's the sign you can see as you are just west of uh, Stevensburg, um, this is the current state of uh, Clover Hill. And apparently uh, it's just being completely run down. Uh, one story is that uh, to, to get the uh, original floor out, they took chainsaws to remove the floors. Um, so it's a sad story. Uh, I guess the Custer aficionados uh, yeah. haven't done enough to try to, uh, try to save this. Uh, a success just south of uh, Stevensburg uh, is the Rose Hill Farm, and that was the headquarters for uh, Justin Kilpatrick. Uh, a, a family has just recently completed the, the restoration of uh, Rose Hill Farm, which is also a, a beam, uh, beam preserve. But they've done just a fantastic restoration of, uh, of that uh, headquarters building. So let, um, let's quickly go through to the rivers, runs, and fords. Um, and one of the interesting things about the Rapidan is that it's very shallow. Mm. It's only three or four feet deep in, uh, in normal times, you know, not, during, uh, not during storms. And it's not very wide. It's only 60 feet wide. Uh, and the south banks are higher where the Confederates were. Um, there are just a whole host of uh, fords on the Rapidan. The main ones are uh, Somerville, Raccoon, Morton's, and Germana, and uh, Eli. Um, it's also interesting that there are some runs that uh, go through the two counties. Mountain Run runs through the center of Culpeper County. Um, but there's also a mountain run in Orange County that uh, ran right through the Confederate encampment and supplied fresh water to the, uh, to the Confederates. Vine Run. Uh, runs through the center of Orange County, uh, where there was the, uh, the battle. Here's a, one picture of the Rapidan River, and you can see, you know, it's uh, just fantastic uh, scenery. You're very shallow. It's got a few few ripples, but if you have a chance to kayak or canoe mm -hmm. on the Rapidan or the Rappahannock, I would jump at the chance. You'll always see a bald eagle out there, and you won't see civilization. Um, so there, there are three types of fords. Uh, in terms of the military use, you have the cavalry fords that uh, are very easy to cross. Uh, sometimes the horses have to swim. You have infantry crossings that were a little harder because the men were carrying their firearms, which you know, couldn't get wet. But uh, mm -hmm. oftentimes you could just walk up, uh, but you would want to be careful about the cliffs. You know, it could be treacherous, especially if they're snipers and pickets uh, right, uh, right above you. And then you have artillery crossings which were hard to find, and oftentimes you had to build pontoon boats to, uh, to get across. So if you're doing a major expedition, you would have to take into account that you want your, uh, your supplies and artillery to, uh, to be with you. Here's uh, Patricia Hurst is a uh, uh, widely written historian in Orange County. This is one of her maps that uh, shows uh, a number of the, uh, number of the fords. You know, the signal station was on top of Clark's, Clark's Mountain. That you've got uh, Raccoon Ford and also Morton's Ford that uh, were very involved. But, you, know, uh, you know, Tobacco Stick Ford, uh, lots of fun names uh, of the Fords. Um, in terms of crossing, here's a, a, a pontoon bridge on Hazel River north of Culpeper County. And you can see the, uh, they, they put in these boats and then they put uh, the wood across for the, uh, the wagons and the artillery. Um, this is an example of a pontoon boat that they have on wheels ready to brush down to uh, uh, get, them, get them in the water. Uh, here's the Union Army crossing Germana Ford uh, uh, as they leave um, 
the winter encampment and uh, move into the wilderness. Um, Raccoon Ford is really interesting. It was on the Carolina Road from Pennsylvania to South Carolina. And actually, there were two Raccoon Fords, as Bud Paul suggests. One was used in the Revolutionary War when uh, uh, the Marquis Lafayette uh, joined up with Mad Anthony Wayne and they crossed the Rapidan in 1781 on the way to Yorktown. And uh, they had a combined you know, 4,500 men uh, crossing from Culpeper into, uh, into Orange and then up Mount Airy Road off of Raccoon Ford Road in uh, Orange. Now, about a mile east of that is what Bud calls Raccoon Ford Number 2, that's actually the Civil War Ford uh, on the Carolina Road. Uh, there was a grist saw and wood carting mills and a little village. And there's actually a, a bridge from uh, 1883 to 1937 when it was destroyed by a flood. But one of the interesting things about you know, the Rapidan is there are very few bridges across it. There's a bridge at uh, Rapidan. I forget the exact number it is. You have 522 Zion's Crossing. Uh, and then 50 miles uh, further downstream, you finally have uh, you know, the Germanda Bridge. And then there's also a bridge at Eli's Ford. But so you only have like four bridges in the course of uh, you know, 30, 35 miles across the, across the Rapidan. So railroads and uh, roads. Uh, one author says this is, was the first railroad war. And I haven't checked this, but he claimed that every major Civil War battle east of the Mississippi took place within 20 miles of a railroad line. And you can see why a you know, major effort would need to have the supplies, and they would be moving troops uh, very easily. Uh, the Orange and Alexandria Railroad was just completed before the war in um, 1854, and had listed the stops there. It went all the way to Gordonsville, so I'm not sure why they called it Orange. Maybe it was Orange, Orange County. And, um, Meade had to rebuild 20 miles of the railroad and set up a depot at Randy Station um, because it was the ONA was uh, a target for the Confederates to uh, to tear up and uh, Bozeby's Rangers to tear up to disrupt uh, things. The Central Virginia Railroad ran from Richmond to Gordonsville and then out to Lynchburg. That was completed in 1840. But it's interesting the um, the state of repair of the Confederate railroads was very bad. In like 1864, uh, people say that it was dismal. That they actually did not, you know, when you have to replace railroads and just maintain railroads, you have to have you know, the iron, iron rails. Well, apparently, the Confederates produced no iron rails throughout the war. And they couldn't get any imports because of the, uh, the Union blockade. And so, uh, they were really struggling in terms of maintaining their railroads. There's a story about uh, it took 60 hours to get uh, some troops from just North Carolina up to, uh, up to Gordonsville because of the bad state of the, uh, the railroads. Um, here's a map of the uh, Civil War railroads. You've got uh, the Orange uh, and Alexandria Railroad, this purple line. There's a little juncture up into Warrington to the uh, the Depot, which is a nice restaurant in Warrington, uh, but you've got uh, you know the uh, Central Virginia Railroad going from Richmond up to Gordonsville, and then it went out to the uh, out to the Valley. You know, Petersburg was a major uh, railroad hub, which was uh, uh, very important later in the war. Um, I actually learned as a result of this research is you know uh, the Union and Confederates did not fight the first battle of the Civil War in Manassas for the farm farm fields. It was because it was an important railroad junction. So here's the Brandy Station uh, Supply Depot. Actually, it looks a little bit like uh, Brandy Station when you cross it at, at the current times. Uh, and here's uh, the Union uh, repairing a railroad uh, after some Confederate destruction. They oftentimes would talk about the bow ties that the mm -hmm. Union and Confederates would shape the iron rails in in order mm -hmm. to prevent them from being uh, being used. Uh, and some major colonial and, and civil war roads. You have uh, the Orange Turnpike. It was constructed in 1813. Uh, it was of crushed stone. It wasn't a plank uh, road. And actually by 1860, it was pretty much in disrepair. Uh, 
And so when you see pictures of the wilderness uh, along Orange Turnpike, you're pretty much just seeing mud. Uh, and what happened was uh, uh, the Turnpike Company uh, that was doing the Orange Turnpike, um, and the Orange Turnpike is a straight line. So they built it through all kinds of uh, area, you know, land that it shouldn't have been using, you know, for uh, for a, for a major railway. And so um, there was another Fredericksburg and Valley Plank Road company that took over the Orange Turnpike right away. But they uh, found a different uh, uh, route, uh, you know, that had better grades, and they also used plank plank roads. Uh, they had toll houses about every five miles uh, in order to collect the tolls. You also had uh, the Germana Plank Road in Orange County, and uh, Pete Rainey's mm -hmm. has an excellent book uh, about the Germana Road. Uh, highly recommend that. In Culpeper County, you had the Carolina Road that went from Norman's Ford down to Stevensburg Road, uh, then south uh, after uh, crossing what is now Route 3. You, uh, if you turn on Blackjack Road, Route 661, down the Algonquin Trail along the river, and then across uh, to Raccoon uh, Ford. That is the, the Civil War. Um, so that was the main uh, north-south route. Uh, the main east-west route was Kurt Lee's Rolling Road. Uh, and it went right through Stevensburg. Uh, if you go up a block from uh, Route 29 into downtown Stevensburg, uh, that's where Kirtley's Rolling Road was. And it, uh, um, parts of it are still in existence, um, but parts no longer are. If you are driving up Carrico Mills, mm -hmm. uh, there's now some new greenhouses being put into place um, uh, north of the existing greenhouses. And uh, to the north of that road is a little sign called LaGrange. Um, and if you turn down that road, it's called Madden's Tavern Road. And uh, it, um, Mad Madden's Tavern is uh, really interesting. And there is a fantastic book about written by an ancestor of uh, the Maddens um, called We Were Always Free. Fantastic book about uh, the proprietor who, uh, who ran the Maddens Tavern. He was a free black, and apparently there were uh, about 460 free blacks in Culpeper County in the beginning of uh, uh, the Civil War. Now, uh, the definition of free um, is they had all kinds of restrictions on them, including not being able to sell uh, alcoholic beverages. And so um, you'll oftentimes see Madden's Tavern on uh, Civil War maps. Um, but uh, he, he was able to uh, have a lot of Teamsters uh, use his place for campgrounds, and he did have a, a, a small tavern, and he would uh, give free alcohol, but then charge it uh, as part of the price of the food. <laughs> but a fa fantastic book if you want to read about Culpeper County and uh, the life of what was a very successful, um, you know, free, free black. But uh, unfortunately, the Origin Alexander Railroad took away a lot of his business uh, because they're using the railroads rather than the, the roads. And then the Civil War, he, like all the other uh, farmers, just had their uh, farms and homes completely uh, decimated. Uh, so let's turn to the heights, uh, mountains and ridges. Um, you've got Clark's Mountain that is the highest one, uh, Cedar Mountain, uh, where there was fighting, but not actually on the mountain. Uh, a little bit lower, Mount Pony, uh, which is, you see very clearly as you were going down Route 3, uh, there's the Library of Congress Audiovisual Center, and that is on Mount Pony. Mount Pony was the, uh, the central signal station for for the Union, and the Clark's Mountain was the, the uh, main signal station for the Confederates. Um, and so they were important uh, signal and observation uh, sites. So there are a number of, uh, you know, Fleetwood Hill and uh, was a major ridge uh, in terms of strategically, you know, during the, uh, the Battle of Randy, Randy Station. So here's a view of Clark's Mountain from just south of uh, Stevensburg, mm -hmm. if you go down, uh, I think, 60, 63 or 661, you can see Clark Mountain uh, uh, ranging fairly high. Um, 
there's a, a, a radio tower. I think someone said it might be a CIA radio yeah. tower on top of, uh, <laughs> of Clark's Mountain. Um, here was my attempted view from Clark Mountain. Uh, one of the real disappointments uh, is that a lot of this, including Pony Mountain and Hansboro Ridge, is private property. Mm -hmm. Very evident in terms of uh, you know, private road, no trespassing, posted private property. Um, uh, and so I was fortunate to be able to get up there with the help of Bud Hall. Bud knows every single farmer in uh, Culpeper County and Orange County. He hopes that uh, at some point they may be generous in terms of giving easements of their, uh, of their property. So we finally made it up. Clark Mussel and I uh, were able to join Bud and uh, the uh, Culpeper Battlefield tourists um, to uh, Clark's Mountain. And you can see from, from Clark's Mountain, you can, uh, I think this is Pony Mountain over here and Hansboro Ridge is, uh, is, is, is over in uh, this direction. And with good uh, binoculars, they could really see uh, a lot. Here's uh, uh, the road sign uh, on the way to Culpeper uh, with, with Pony Mountain in, in the background. Uh, they talk about uh, General Pope using it in 1862 as part of his, uh, his uh, being in Culpeper County, but it was used extensively during the 1864 uh, winter encampment. Uh, and here's, a, I think, a great map about the Union Signal Station Network, uh, mm -hmm. where they use semaphores uh, to communicate. And so you have, uh, this is the Union, so you have uh, Pony Mountain here, uh, and then you've got uh, Coles Hill here, they're communicating, and then you have the Army Headquarters, Meads Headquarters, Fleetwood Hill, you have uh, Culpeper Courthouse, where one of the corps was, the Fifth Corps, and then uh, you're also looking out to the west in terms of Thoroughfare Mountain and Cedar Mountain, Garnets Mountain, uh, and so Pony Mountain was very important in terms of communicating among these 100,000 uh, troops and you know, seeing if uh, if the Confederates were moving at all. Um, so here's a signal station on Garnet's Hill. Uh, so you can see just a small team up there, but with uh, with telescopes and binoculars. Uh, and then oftentimes we'd relay it through uh, either semaphore or, or telegraph lines. Uh, here's uh, Edwin Forbes drawing of uh, did a lot of Civil War drawings of uh, the Pony Mountain Signal Station. And apparently the signal station, which is built up about, uh, I don't know if it's one or two stories, is still there on top of Pony Mountain. It's not in very good shape, but the, you can actually see where, uh, you know, where this guy was, uh, this guy was sitting. So um, there were a lot of, I'm not sure I'll call them major events, uh, during the encampment, but there was a lot happening. Uh, Lee was oftentimes in Richmond conferring with Jefferson Davis because uh, they were worried about the Western Theater and there was talk about uh, Lee being moved out to the Western Theater, away from the Eastern Theater, but I think he talked them into having him stay. Uh, Meade was home with pneumonia during the month of January and he was also testifying before the Congressional Committee on the Conduct of the War. Uh, several of the Union generals didn't like uh, uh, need and uh, they argued that his slowness in terms of following up Lee and the Gettysburg campaign as well as the mine run uh, quote battle uh, and so Meade was being grilled by the Congressional uh, Committee uh, during the month of January. Uh, we'll talk very briefly about uh, the demonstrations on the Rapidan including the Morton's Ford engagement and also Kilpatrick's expedition against Richmond and Custer's raid into uh, toward Charlottesville. Um, but uh, Meade arrived in Culpeper Courthouse on March 26th, you know, just uh, five weeks before starting the Overland campaign. And he uh, conferred weekly, uh, oftentimes traveling the O&A up, uh, up to Washington. Um, on May 2nd, well, I guess uh, the, the troops were also joined by uh, Burnside who brought his corps of 20,000 soldiers from Annapolis. Uh, both Burnside and Longfellow, uh, uh, Longstreet were in, in the West uh, earlier uh, that fall and earlier in the winter. And so uh, Burnside brought his troops to Annapolis and uh, 
Longstreet's uh, troops came uh, into Gordonsville in late, late April. On May 2nd, Lee had a council of war with all three corps uh, generals, Longstreet, uh, Hewell, and Hill, uh, and eight division commanders on top of Clark's Mountain. And uh, he, he told the, the signal guys to keep a close watch on what the Union was doing. They saw movement uh, of the Union troops uh, uh, that night uh, in front of the campfires, but they couldn't tell which direction they were going. He thought they might go west to try to flank him uh, towards Cedar Mountain or to the east uh, into the wilderness. Uh, Lee actually thought that they were going to go east, and he was right. He got a, a telegram, a telegraph from uh, Clark's Mountain that uh, they were breaking camp at uh, midnight, and uh, they determined that they were moving east uh, in, into the wilderness. Um, so there was fighting, uh, but very minor uh, fighting during this period. Um, Washington ordered uh, General Sedgwick to initiate a diversionary attack to support a cavalry <coughs> infantry raid on Richmond by Union General Butler from the east, who was in the Bermuda 100. Uh, they had this great plan that uh, coming in from the east, they would be able to capture Richmond. Butler, of course, like most of the times he fought, uh, was a complete, complete failure. Uh, the the 8,000 Third Division troops uh, hid behind Stony Point it is right between 663 and 661. Uh, uh, you're driving down just south of Stevensburg. Uh, they were able to get across the river in freezing water. Uh, they were able to make it up the hill part way, but then uh, the ridge was heavily, heavily fortified, and uh, they suffered about 300 uh, Union casualties and withdrew uh, after dark. Um, Judson Kilpatrick, uh, I think he was commander of the 3rd Cavalry, he had this great idea that he was going to uh, go down to Richmond with 4,000 cavalry and uh, free the prisoners who were in the, the Richmond jail and on Bell Isle. Uh, and he went over the heads of uh, uh, Meade and uh, other officers directly to President Lincoln. And of course, uh, they wanted to, the President wanted to do as much as possible, so they gave the go-ahead over the objections of, uh, of Meade and, uh, and Sedgwick. And so, um, well, Kilpatrick uh, was going down toward Richmond, uh, you know, I think through Spotsylvania Courthouse. They wanted a diversionary uh, attack, and so they sent uh, uh, Custer with 1,000 cavalry toward Charlottesville. And they also moved two uh, federal corps down into Madison County. A major operation in terms of diverting them from this 4,000 cavalry uh, trip. Uh, Custer was able to burn some homes and farms that didn't destroy the railroad bridge that he was uh, supposed to do, and he returned, you know, uh, you know three days later. The uh, Kilpatrick uh, Dahlgren raid uh, made it close to uh, Richmond, the north of Richmond, but then they sort of uh, said, well, oh, Maybe, the, maybe there was too much uh, troops in front of them. And so uh, Kilpatrick went off to the east to, to save himself. Dahlgren, uh, who I think was second in command, uh, his uh, troops uh, suffered majorly. He, he was killed, and on his body there were some papers that allegedly said that he was supposed to assassinate uh, Confederate President Jefferson Davis and also burn Richmond, which became a major uh, political issue, you know, both in the South and also in the uh, in the North. So there was some some fighting. Uh, it's really interesting that um, both Lee and Grant were almost captured or killed during this period. Mm -hmm. That uh, Lee was returning from Richmond to Orange on February 29th and narrowly avoided capture as Union cavalry from the Kilpatrick raid uh, cut the Virginia Central Railroad. Uh, about 20 minutes uh, after his train had passed. Mm -hmm. And then in Grant's autobiography, he's talking about you know, going up to uh, Washington, D.C. to meet with the president that he did on a, on a weekly basis. And he said, Bosby had crossed mm -hmm. the Orange and Alexandria Railroad a few minutes before at full speed in pursuit of federal cavalry. 
Had he seen our train coming, no doubt he would have let his prisoners escape to capture the train. Mm. I was on a special train, if I remember correctly, without any guard. Mm. That was uh, you know, a few days before moving on May, May 4th. So think about uh, you know, sort of the, the circumstances. So the end of the encampments, uh, the Army of the Potomac, uh, Grant chose to go east to flank the Confederates. Uh, the second corps went across Eli's Ford, the third and sixth uh, corps, uh, Warren and Sedgwick, uh, crossed Germana Ford. Uh, the Army of Northern Virginia, uh, they were clearly thinking that you know, the, the, the mud and the spring rains had uh, pretty much uh, uh, stopped, so they were anticipating uh, uh, the Union to be moving. He, uh, Lee, on, on, when, when he heard that they were actually moving, you know, sent Ewell uh, via the Orange Turnpike, and he sent uh, Hill and his corps via the Orange Plank Road, and then uh, Longstreet, who was uh, down in Gordonsville, had a longer uh, uh, trip, and uh, he came also via Orange Plank Road. And, then you had the Battle of the Wilderness starting at Saunders Field on Route 20 on, uh, mm. on May 5th. Uh, that was the last time that Grant was in Culpeper County. It was the last time that Lee was in Orange County during, during the war. So you know, between the battles of Mine Run uh, and also the Battle of Downtown Locust Grove, uh, where there was uh, skirmishing, and uh, the Wilderness Battle, you know, the two eastern armies, and we don't want to forget that there was a lot happening in the valley and out west, um, uh, spent five months in our local counties. And there are many features of the Civil War beyond just the particular battlefields. Uh, and we're lucky to have uh, the relatively unchanged landscapes and geographical features remaining with the thanks to the battlefield trusts. You know, they have to be very persistent uh, in terms of keeping it up because uh, things like uh, Clover Hill can, uh, can be gone you know, in, a, in a very short period of time. The Amazon uh, data center is going to be put up uh, within view of Hansboro Ridge. Uh, and we know about uh, the wilderness crossing, but uh, kudos to them for, the, uh, you know, for their valiant efforts. And uh, they are definitely worth uh, Supporting, I know the Civil War Study Group uh, is doing an awful lot for that. But it is, I think, just been uh, fun for me knowing more about the winter encampments, and it has helped me explore and enjoy our beautiful counties. But thanks. I, I'd be I'd be happy to answer answer any questions people have. Sure. Governor Youngkin was born in Richmond, lived in uh, Virginia Beach. Do you know anything about his relatives? Was there a connection with the War of Secession? I, I do not. I think he's a Virginian. So he would <coughs> be for it because he's a governor. Right? We yeah, that's, know that's his a, background. That's a really interesting question. I'll, I will, uh, I'll be happy to do some searching for that. And I have right? a picture of my granddaughter with him at Riverbend. Okay, that's great. But you know, kudos, kudos, tall, but not that tall. Kudos to Governor Yonkin for yes. uh, putting in money into his uh, initial budget for the Culpeper State uh, State Park. I think he initially put in five million dollars, uh, but it ended up at uh, you know three million or a little bit more than three million. But uh, like it. it's great to yeah. have. You know, the Battlefield Trust, the local historians, the local communities, you know, trying to push for the first state park in Culpeper County. And, you know, the, the state representatives who uh, were involved in that effort, as well as Governor Yonkin, deserve a lot of praise. Do you have a question? Real, in the movie Gods in General, they bring up the, the railroad master. They would have lost the battle if it wasn't for the railroads bringing Jackson. They brought that out in the movie Gods and Gentlemen, which was interesting, but you connected it all. How the railroads were really, and telegraph, and, and they used telescopes 
Yes. They didn't have binoculars. Well, they, they had binoculars, right. and you also saw the fellow on, on Garnet Hill using a, using a telescope. And that was really critical. I, I love um, Clark's Mountain. I, you can go up there. You, you can drive in there. They won't bother you. If you ignore all those signs, I, I, I was tempted two different times because you, you get up there Stay and you can just see over, you can see over the ridge, but you can't see any of Culpeper County. Just beautiful blue sky. But then, uh, you know, it would be great if that became, you know, uh, available to people without trespassing. Back in the early '80s, more mm -hmm. apple orchards. My son, but they don't do it anymore because of liability. But are there, are there any other questions, please? Pick apples. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, is, <clears throat> since the railroads were in such bad shape mm -hmm. in the South, or the soldiers, I read the little I've read, they do a lot of marching, but did, did they transport many of the soldiers to the South by railroad? Or the North was transferring them a lot by railroad, but what percentage do you think would the South be able to transport by railroad? I, I don't know what percentage, but I think they tried to use the railroads as much as possible when you talk about Longstreet going from uh, Virginia, all the way down to uh, Tennessee, to Chuckamauga, to help uh, Braxton Bragg. That was by train, and they brought them back um, in uh, April by, by train. Uh, long distances. There is a story about one uh, troop movement where they were going to go by train, you know, from the valley up toward uh, Appomattox, and uh, they decided that they would get there faster if they marched rather than taking the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, uh, uh, one of the strategies that Lee was considering to escape Appomattox was to uh, get to the railroads. Any other questions, please? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs>
I think we, I'm, I've got my back to the room, so I really have a sense, but I can't count how many people are here. But if we have people who are here that we do not have email addresses for, we would love to have your email addresses so you can put on our list, sir, and Charles uses that most judiciously to make us aware of programs and activities for other organizations as well as ours, but always related to the history of the Civil War. And we don't sell you anything. <laughs> no. and, uh, and, and so, in fact, we're, we ask you, just for communication purposes, uh, with uh, the tour of Mine Run, uh, to uh, uh, provide your uh, email address. And again, we don't give that to anyone else, and, and they are shared when we send email messages to Charles. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, uh, Box, for bringing that up. We used to have a uh, sign-up sheet. So. Uh, but no longer do. But uh, if you wish to share your email address, if you're not currently on our, uh, don't get our email uh, emails, uh, uh, please uh, send uh, your email to Civil War Study Group at gmail.com. All right. So, are there any other um, uh, uh, points of business? If if none other, uh, then uh, thank you so much. For coming. This has been an outstanding crowd. Uh, please uh, have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you here next month. Bye-bye. Before you go, please remember to visit our website often, civilwarstudygroup.org. We make every attempt on a regular basis to provide informative content. Thank you for visiting, and God bless.